I'm going to start off with Milena Berry, and uh, she's the co-founder of Power to Fly, a firm whose dual mission is to empower companies by closing their gender gap in tech and help millions of women around the world find innovative jobs. She was also the CTO of the distributed online activist community, avaz.org, and she took that technology platform from having no users or barely any users to 33 million members. So, um, Elena. Hey, everyone. So, I'm, I'm going to start by saying that at Avaz, I was always the nerd amongst content creators, our campaigners. I had no, nothing to do with the message of, of the organization. I was there to basically create the systems for that message to get out to our members and to enable that campaigning to happen. Um, and it's, it's really interesting because reflecting on that experience, I definitely see how we use the power of storytelling to create change. So a lot of what we did there, and, and so like not just to report on the story that's happening, but to take that story, analyze for the, for the potential for it, to, for, to affect it somehow towards a hopeful outcome, and then basically mobilize citizens around the world to take an action on that item so that they could change political outcome, fundraise for climate disaster, help with a genocide situation, et cetera, et cetera. So if there is one thing I want to give to this crowd is to think about not just reporting, but how can you take re your reporting to the next level? And as you tell your story, what are the tools that we, we have these days to basically enable your readers to take an action based on the story that you've told? And there's a lot of examples, well, some examples out there that I've started to see. Uh, the Dodo is a site that uh, I don't know how many of you know, but it, it tells you know, stories of animals, mishaps. Um, and and that's, that's a site that I've seen that uses, you know, now take an action based on it, right? Um, I think Move On has experimented with this, where they, they would tell you something of a political disaster or like content related to it. And then they say, and now take an action uh, and do something about it. So, that's one thing that, that comes to mind. The other thing about stories is that, I don't know how true that is, but, but I heard that Obama was not such a great speaker until he met with Marshall Gantz, uh, who is a researcher who uh, wrote an amazing essay, and I encourage all of you to Google it and read it. It's just a two-pager, but it talks about um, the story of me of, of like how to, how to write a good political speech, right? And, and every good political speech, according to Marshall Gantz, should have three components. One is the story of me, the next component is the story of us, and then the last piece is the story of now. And so if you think about this for a moment, I think there is a potential here for journalists to, 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 to you know, basically create more transformative work if you, if you use this motto of saying, okay, so this is the story of me, this is the story that I'm writing, this is the story of us, which is what all of us can do about the situation, and the story of now is what do we have to act on to actually change now. Um, so that's a little um, bit that kind of I wanted to leave with you. Um, the other piece that, as I reflected on this day, was interesting to me was how from what I've heard, journalists are told to tell impartial stories, right? To be objective, to, to, to represent the truth from all different sides. And, and I find this less and less relevant as I read the news myself. I want to read an opinion. I want to express an opinion based on a story that I've read. I want to like it, to comment it, to forward it, because I have liked this opinion. And so I encourage all of you to go the less impartial route, but to take a stand with the story that you're writing uh, because that's what resonates with me, at least, and I hope that resonates with, with more people. And, um, and lastly, I wanted to bring it back a little bit to what um, we're doing at Power to Fly and, and how that kind of affects the journalism world. First of all, we started by being a platform for remote jobs for women in tech, but we're quickly finding out that there's a lot of demand in journalists and writers and social media editors for, for our platform. So it's actually becoming the, the second largest audience for us. So I think it's, it's 
it says something about the industry and, and the type of work that people are looking for. Uh, so I encourage all of you working in newsrooms to kind of open an eye to the remote worker out there. Um, and second of all, I think we're one of the, well, we're the only um, the job platform that I have seen out there which really focuses on telling the story of the individual applying for a job. So if you look at LinkedIn, it's very dry, right? There's like education, there's experience, there's like skills. Um, and at Part of Fly, we're kind of merging. My co-founder comes from an editorial background. She worked at the Huffington Post and Washington Post, et cetera. And, 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 and we're kind of merging those um, learnings from these big media properties where they kind of had like the big splash and the big headline and, and a big focus on the story to, to grow an audience. We're taking that approach and basically merging it into the job search process so that when a woman applies for a job, she's not just a resume, not just a professional, but she tells the story of her life there because that in our thinking represents, well, this is who you're getting. You're not just getting a robot who knows how to program. You're getting a mom who loves to mountain bike on the weekend, and you know I see her crossing a river with two little kids. This is part of who she is. And, and if you see the woman as an individual, and as this is her story, apart from her professional life, we feel that we have a chance to basically break the, the gender ratio that's happening and, and to convince employers to, to go for it and uh, embrace this new way of working. So I hope this kind of left you with a few nuggets there. I don't know if it's just one. <laughs>